Good afternoon. It's October 13th. It's my mom's birthday. And we're just looking at what happened in the real estate market for the last three days, just as a refresher. October 26th, if you can see my calendar, is when Helene hit. And Wednesday, October 9th, is when Milton hit. So what we're looking at is trying to figure out what the market's doing or what it's going to do or and nobody knows, but I have some theories. And so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the market. And today in Pasco County, we have 3,995. I'm pointing with my hand. You can't see uh, listings, active listings. That number's gone down. Pendings are 1488. That's up slightly. And then with solds, which are crushed because of the, uh, you know, because of these two storms, um, we're going to go minus seven. We're going to go back one week. And then we're going to go back 30 days to see what that number is, 1,039. This is a troubling number, but can you kind of understand we just had two hurricanes. You figure we lost at least four days a week on each one of those. So this is equivalent to a 22-day uh, month, which means we might be over 1,500 if we were to somehow annualize it. I don't think that's the right word. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at what happened in the last three days. So we've had 34 new listings hit the market. Uh, let's take a look at here. Atlantis, this $5,000 is not right. Osprey, it's not a flood zone. Tahitian Gardens did not flood. Baywood uh, Meadows, two bedroom, one bath, $145,000. That's a big number. Richboro did flood in Beacon Square, $174,000. That doesn't look like it's priced for a flood home. Uh, let's just run through here. Yeah, no, most of these are not. Okay, Donzi, this is a new listing. I'm the listing agent. This has been on the market for two days, $319,000. This is a three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage uh, that was probably worth, I don't know what, 500000 a couple of weeks ago, and now it's flooded. And you can see the um, interior here eventually. There it is. So it's been cut. And it is what it is. We've had one offer on it. I wonder if I can say that. I just did. And uh, let's move on. Barnett Loop, $345,000 for a 322. Uh, another Barnett Loop just sold for two, the 290s. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that one. It's been on the market for two days. Let's switch back to this view. Balsam Gulf Harbors Galleon. Okay, this is likely a flood home. And it was listed one day ago, $399,000. And it's a nice, nice location in a great neighborhood, 70-foot seawall. And I don't see them saying it flooded. But let's see what the... Uh, yeah, so... Roughly half of Gulf Harbor is flooded, and I'm guessing this one didn't because it doesn't say it did, but you never know. All right, City of Newport Ritchie, $459,000, works out to $199 a square foot. Uh, City of New Newport Ritchie is hot, hot, hot. This is not a flood zone, so uh, Trinity, nice house. Sable at Wintry, Rose Haven, Rose Haven, City of Newport Ritchie, $615,000. Okay, this is two duplexes uh, listed today. I looked at these this morning. Seven Oaks, Starkey Ranch. Okay, so those are all, oh wow, look at that. $949,000 for a 2024 house. I know we shouldn't be spending time. Oh my goodness. You know, it's a million dollars, 949. If you need financing on this, I can get it. All right, so now we're looking at the state of the market. The only way to look at the state of the market is see what's just happened. And uh, we've got 1,488 properties that are listed uh, pending. We're going to look at the last three days. 29 properties have gone under contract. Oh, I looked at this earlier. So these are the flood condos that uh, were listed 12 days ago after these all flooded from Helene. Uh, new 
Newport Colony. And uh, all right, Griffin Park did not flood, one hundred ten thousand dollars. Ponderosa did not flood. Berlin flooded. Let me tell you, this neighborhood is very, very low. Uh, let's see if they properly disclosed it. Under contract, contractors delight. Took on water during Helene. We love it when they disclose. And there's a lot more going on with these flood houses. It, I saw a property today that was condemned on the side of the road. It flooded three times in the last couple of years. It flooded during Idalia. It flooded during Ian and it flooded during Helene. And you have to know that the county and FEMA are not going to let these guys or these people continually rebuild these homes that keep flooding over and over again. And there's a lot of talk and a lot of fear out there of properties that are going to be condemned. And uh, it's a frightening state of affairs. All right, Kate K, Fair Lane. Oh, this is, I know this property very well. Um, that went pending. How about that? After 219 days. Now, the ground floor on this one flooded, I'm sure. But, uh, I mean, look at this. It's very interesting to look at the prices. This property sold at three something, five something, and now it's five eighty nine. How about that? Very nice. Okay, this one here is uh, on the water ish. Um, if you look at where it's located, this is on Cross Bayou, and uh, I don't know if it includes the opportunity to have a boat uh, a boat dock or not. But, and it's not really waterfront, but it's $780,000 for a stilt home in Egrets, and uh, it's new construction. This is it, $780,000. And Lake Jovida. Okay, so those are the pendings in the last three days. And now let's look and see what sold in the last three days. Now, this is not really fair because... It can be three or four or five days before a, a listing is actually uploaded as uh, as sold. It could be three or four days. So let's go back nine days and see what the market looks like for that period. 88 properties closed in the last nine days. Helene was the 26th. So one, uh, do we do calendar days? I think we do. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. No, I should do it this way. One, two, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. So since Friday before last, 88 properties have closed. Gulf Harbors Condo, Orange Blossom in Zephyr Hills. Okay, you know, it, it, I hate to say this, but it, it, the, it's the flood zone properties that we're worried about. Are people going to buy in the flood zone? And only five out of the 88 are flood zone properties. Now, I know one of them I've talked about several times, the one in Gulf Harbors. Uh, this is a condo on the second or third floor. Okay, Beacon Square, 199000 sold for 195000 It's in an A East flood zone. And Overland, let's look at the map. Okay, the, what in Beacon Square, these are the ones that flooded down here at the, by Strawberry Parkway. And I think... No, these did not flood there, and, and Key Vista didn't flood. Uh, Bailey's Bluff did flood, but uh, this one may likely did not flood. May likely. Oh, boy, it's a good thing nobody watches this stuff. Okay, Martell and Seven Springs. Now, we had freshwater flooding in the last two days that was devastating, and some of the streets that flooded included uh, homes in Seven Springs. Now, I did drive through all through here yesterday, and uh, I don't think these houses here flooded. I think the ones that flooded are the ones right here. And I think the, uh, here's the river right here. So everything here may have flooded. This is um, Venice Estates, Ancote River Highlands, definitely suspect. I, I'm, in fact, is all of this flooded right here. The water was coming up onto here and uh, so uh, 
This Martell property right here, I'm, I'm fairly confident, did not flood. But buying in a flood zone, I mean, if you're coming in and you want to buy a house from me, I'm going to fight you unless it's waterfront. There's no reason to buy in a flood zone. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Loha Gardens did not flood. Let's look at where this is. Yeah, the, these houses did not flood. Um, all the way up to uh, Key Vista did not flood. Tiki Village did not flood. Minnehaha Terrace had sporadic flooding down here. Holiday Lakes West did not flood. I was, I was, that, excuse me, it did not flood during Helene. And Milton now has freshwater flooding where the river is going over the banks. And we're still trying to figure out where is that water coming from? Park Lake Estates. Actually, it, um, all right, this neighborhood just flooded from freshwater flooding. Oh my gosh. And these people are right on the water. And they closed on the 7th. So the freshwater flooding in this neighborhood didn't occur until um, until Friday and Saturday is when it started. So they closed on the 7th. And the hurricane hit on the 9th. And now that area is... Uh, crushed i have pictures of the entrance to this neighborhood and it's right here and this is all underwater right here did this property flood i couldn't drive into the neighborhood and look because the water was too deep and that's freshwater flooding post uh hurricane all right so the big risk right now is these homes that have flooded two and three times is the county going to allow these properties to be rebuilt and the answer is in some cases, they're definitely not going to allow them to be rebuilt. There's what's called the 50% rule. I've talked about it before. But if the repairs of the home are greater than 50% of the tax assessed value of the building or the structure, they're not going to let you rebuild. And it is feared that some neighborhoods, whole neighborhoods could be condemned. Homes in Leisure Beach are suspect for condemnation. Uh, Vista Del Mar. Um, certainly Green Key Estates, I should get a map up here and talk about it using a map. Um, let's use uh, Park Lake Estates and just whip out to the waterfront and see what we've got here. Uh, now, these ones down at Beacon Square, they're likely flooded during Ian. They flooded during Helene and they uh, flooded during um, Ian, Helene and Adalia. Adalia was the other one. So coming down here in Minnehaha Terrace, likely some of these homes flooded several times. Bailey's Bluff. Bailey's Bluff is actually a little bit higher for a lot of these homes. Now, a lot of these homes did flood during um, Helene. The question is, did they flood during Ian? I don't know. It. Or Adalia. Okay. Uh, Gulf Harbor's right here. Uh, many of these homes flooded, many did not. Along here, uh, they did flood most every single one. I think the water was up three or four feet. Out here on some of these canals, the water, the, the, the canals are just higher. And uh, on some, or on one anyway, on Marlin, the houses on the west side right here, these houses did not flood and these houses did. And we, we have to go house by house, really, and street by street to determine the you know, which ones had flooding. Uh, Gulf Harbor Sea Forest is higher. It's likely that there wasn't much flooding there. Gulf Harbor's woodlands is higher. Bayshore Estates is mostly homes built later, making them um, uh, stilt homes. Now, these homes here all flooded, devastating flooding. All these homes are likely to get knocked down and uh, or condemned and ultimately knocked down. Limestone is where this uh, this home here, um, this home right here, this home right here, shoot, I'm sorry, was condemned today. And uh, all of these streets flooded during Idalia, Helene, and I don't have a chronicle of Ian because I, I live here now, but I wasn't here during Ian. Anyway, 
I'm Randy Jenkins. I appreciate the opportunity to compete for your business. If you have any questions, I'll tell you, you don't need me. Don't buy in a flood zone. And then now you have to ask the realtor you're dealing with, did this have fresh water flooding? And I just did a video on the 100 and, uh, or 25 tips for buyers. And one of them is talk to the neighbors before you come out of your inspection period. And call me if you want to know what to ask them. Have a great day. Bye now.